West is my country. Big, plenty of opportunity, room to move around in, but above all, peaceful. Most of the time, that is. Sometimes a cowboy's recreation gets a little strenuous. Not that it's all play. A man with a horse, a good rope, a little imagination, and a hot running iron could become a big cowman without too much trouble. Or if he had a bent towards a more stationary life, he could homestead himself some land. Or maybe he could make a good living just being downright skillful with his hands. An easy and pleasant way to make a living, but a little too uncertain for my taste. I just as soon stay away from trouble. My name's Destry. I spent some time in prison. But once I catch up with a fellow that was responsible for me going there, maybe I'll make some permanent plans myself. I've never really decided what those plans would be, but I know they're going to include a lot of peace and quiet, because that's what I like most. Noise and fighting bothers me, and like I say, I do what I can to stay away from it. Yes, sir, one of these days I plan to find me a real friendly place. But until I do, I spend most of my time moving along, unless something stops me, like it did in the town of Little River. I figured I'd just pass right on through, and for sure gambling was the last thing I had in my mind. It wasn't what I'd planned at all. That's because a couple of nights before I got to Little River, they had some unscheduled activity down at the express office. That's an outrage, and I want action. I'm offering a thousand dollars reward for the man who robbed me and killed poor old Hank Bismarck. No sense heating up, Alex. I already know who done it. Well, and another thing. I... You what? There was a witness. The killer was described as a man over six feet tall, dark hair, gray eyes, lanky. Well, that could be anybody. That's right. But we just happen to have a tin type of the man we want, an ex-convict from Texas. By morning, I'll have posters up on him all over the county. Well, don't forget the reward money. It'll be there. One thousand dollars. Dead or alive, all right, Alex? Fine. Oh, how anybody could shoot a sweet old man like Hank. What's the name of the killer, Sheriff? Name of Destry. <laughs> I'll be getting off here. How about you? Next stop up the line for me. Excuse me. I'll be happy to help you with your bags, Miss Carter. Thank you. Miss Carter's bag. It's been a long time, but it's still like coming home. It's kind of you to help me. Well, you made the trip a pleasure this far. Thank you. Thank you, 
you again. I wish you were staying in town. Well, I got pressing business on up the line. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, would you mind pointing that somewhere else? Lucky I haven't pulled the trigger yet. I couldn't agree with you more. Now, if you'll excuse me. One more move out of you and I'll blast you clean down the street. Now, March. March. I'm taking you over to the jail. Well, I don't want to go to the jail. I got a coach that's about to leave. Your gear's down off in it. Well, that's mighty considerate of you. Now, do you mind telling me what all this is about? Your name's Estri, ain't it? That's right. That's your picture, ain't it? Well, this is a mistake. It's yours, not mine. Well, be reasonable. For that much money, I would have turned myself in. Now, March. Sheriff, let me explain. You're making a big mistake. I've never even been in this town. You're lucky you reached this office before you got hanged. Hang now, just a moment. I'm getting a little Go tired. on, get into that cell. This isn't even a good likeness. Oh, Mr. Destry, I just heard about this. Mr. Carter, welcome back. Sheriff Denton, you're wrong about Mr. Destry. He couldn't have done those things two nights ago. But a witness saw him. Two nights ago, I was on the Overland stage. With me and several other passengers. Sheriff, you want proof. Telegraph the stage master at Sweetwater. This witness you say saw me, Sheriff, uh, who was he? He's a stranger. I took his statement myself. What was his name? Said his name was Charles. Uh, Baker. Have you said fellow? About 30? Yeah. Scar on his right cheek? Well, it seems to me... Uh, him? Yeah, him. That's Charlie Ben. And five will get you ten, he's long gone from this town. Well, I ain't seen him lately, that's true. I've been chasing him clear across this territory. He'd love to see me hang. Mr. Destry, I'm a man who admits a mistake. Now, that fellow gave me false testimony. I'm going to telegraph every town around here. Two or three days, I'll have a pretty fair idea just which way he's headed. And after what he tried to do to you, I'll see that you get any information I pick up. Well, it's mighty decent of you, Sheriff. Uh, there is one other thing I'd appreciate. You just name it. I'd like all these uh, dead or alive posters to be gathered up. Otherwise, uh, somebody's liable to try to collect on me dead, which could be embarrassing. It's going to be kind of hard remembering where I posted all of them. Oh, you try real hard, will you, Sheriff? You try. I'll do my very best, Mr. Destry. Meanwhile, I'll stick around town just to avoid the inconvenience of being shot at. No hard feeling. None at all. Oh, Sheriff, you might start by pulling down that one behind you. I certainly am obliged to you, Miss Carter. Well, I really am glad that I could help you. Because... Well, now that you have to be in town two or three days, you can be of some help to me, too. I can? Hey, now, hold on there, gentlemen. Let's not be hasty. Put him away, fellas. Oh, that, that poster's a mistake. There. That's the reason I'm here. You mean you came back here all the way from the east on account of the silver showboat? That's right. Well, that's funny. You don't look like the type. <laughs> well, it's a long story. I'll be glad to tell it to you. Over a cup of coffee? All right. So that's how it is. I'm going to gamble at the silver showboat and win a great deal of money. Miss Carter. At the Silver Showboat, you will last about half an hour with a little luck. I shall win. Couldn't you pick on a little bit nicer place? No. It has to be the Silver Showboat. But I need a man to be my escort. 
Miss Carter. Call me Melinda, Mr. Destry. Call me Destry. Melinda, if you have any money... I have a hundred dollars. Well, then you hold on to it. Because otherwise you lose your shirt. Uh, blouse. No, I win. Now, what makes you so certain? Because I'm an expert mathematician. I've even written a thesis called Chance in Gambling. Gambling can be a science. Well, around here, it's uh, considered more like an art. Here. Let me show you what I mean about mathematical arts. How many times have you gambled? Oh, never. But I've read every book. And believe me, I can win with science. What are the odds of a king coming up? Well, uh, four and fifty-two, or one and thirteen. But there's a joker in the deck. About the same. Exactly one chance in 13.25. I've dealt eight cards now without a king. What have the odds changed to? About, uh... Exactly 11.25 to one. Roulette. In addition to the probability of wheel imbalance, the odds are 35 to one. Except for zero and double zero. But when you use Baron Stalivansky's geometric progression of numerical order with Pythagoras' laws of... Linda, it won't work. It has to. You lose your shirt. Blouse. You're not a professional gambler. Your systems haven't got a chance. The last thing I'll do is escort you. Number seven, Red. Melinda, we've been here for five hours, in which time you placed only three bets, all of which you lost. We call it a night? I'm going to have a beautiful pattern here in a minute. Definite bilateral Euclidean relationship. For what? These odds can't be wrong at this point. I have the mathematical relationship to the wheels in balance. Uh, did you know that some of these places have lit wheels? So stand up and bark. Number seven, Red. Five on nine and five on seventeen. Nine, Red. It's five on nine and five on seventeen. Yes, please. All bits down. Ten on number nine and ten on seventeen. Ten on number nine and ten on number seventeen. Number nine, red. You four straight wheel. Oh, now I'm really going to win. Three hundred on number ten. Three hundred on number ten. I think you better retract that bet while you still can, Melinda. But according to Euclid and the balance of the wheel, it almost can't lose. Number nineteen, Red. Stood up and barked. But I was so sure. Seventeen black. What are you down to? Thirty dollars. I think you should see number ten next. Well, I may get this roulette table dropped on my head, but put the whole thirty on it. But according to my scientific conservative pattern of wagering and to Euclidean theory... Neither you nor Euclid was ever in the silver showboard before. I'll do what I tell you. $30 on number 10. $30 on number 10. Kind of sad to see a lady lose all her money. That's the fortunes of chance, friend. That is true indeed, friend. Here you go. All bets down, please. Number 10 black, 10 wins. I win over a thousand dollars of history. A thousand fifty dollars, lady. Oh, my goodness, I told you it would work. My theory works. Oh, thank you. What do you say we quit, Melinda? Oh, when everything's going so well. Uh, but you're tired. You might miscalculate. Come on. Oh, I suppose you're right. I am tired. All bets down there, rolling. Miss, I just wanted to tell you how glad I am that you won. Oh, I've just begun. Oh. Well, I hope you run up that thousand some more. Oh, I assure you, I shall. Are you looking to get some broken bones, mister? 
people. No, absolutely not. Now, we don't mind losing a thousand. As long as you make sure she comes in again. So as we'll get a fair chance to win it back. I see. Well, uh... You'll excuse me, gentlemen. What those men were? Oh, they were just, uh... Sort of congratulating you on your mathematical gambling. Oh, we'll do even better tomorrow night. Uh, you don't really want me to gamble tomorrow night, do you? Well, in a way, I don't. But again, in a way, I do. I am tired. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Charlie Bent. I understand he's headed south. I'm going after him. But well, what about tonight? Linda, I don't know what part luck and what part your system played in your winning last night. But as of now, forget about ever gambling at the Silver Showboat forever, please. But we won last night. Linda, we won last night. Or rather, you won last night. Because I've got the fastest foot in the West. I don't understand. That roulette wheel is crooked. Controlled by a button under the table. It is? Hmm? Well, then I won't play roulette anymore. But I've got to win more. You're the most money-hungry woman I've ever met. Then you won't help me. For once and for all, no. Will you do me a favor, then? What is it? Before you leave, will you take a ride with me out of town? <laughs> Nice to see you again. You may not remember me. Of course, you're Mr. Whitney from the express office. That's right. Your father was a good friend of mine, Miss Carter. And I want you to know that like most people in this town, I was in favor of what he was trying to do. Thank you, Mr. Whitney. In fact, that's why I'm here. I fully intend to see that his dream comes true. Well, if there's anything at all I can do, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Destry. You're welcome, Miss Carter. Miss Carter? Destry, I just picked this one up out of Four Corners. It's the last one, I think. You think? Well, yeah, except for some the wind blowed down. Uh, some fellas pocketed some, maybe. Well, that's just fine, Sheriff. If I get shot, I guess the joke will be on me. Yeah. <laughs> You sure are a caution, Mr. Destry. <laughs> How much farther is it? Oh, just a few miles. Your mare looks like she's beginning to lame up. May have to leave her out here, double up on this horse going back. I can come out and get her later on. That's it. Well, whatever it is, it ain't much. Oh, you won't find much here. This is the Cherokee Reservation.
Mara Sue, please die. Mara Sue, please die. Mara Sue. Oh, Miss Amutinta. <laughs> Gona Musa. You speak Cherokee? Yes, do you? A couple of words. Gona Destry. Gona Takla. Tantai. Wow. Tony Amutinta? Mara Sue, Tantai. Melinda, did you bring me all the way out here just to pay a social call? Yes. But not on Chief Tuckler and his wife. On who, then? On them. Matunusa, come on. Matunusa. Oh, Mary, how you've grown. Look at you. Such a big girl now. Oh, Tommy, you're going to be as big as your father. Do you like these children? Yeah, sure, they're fine. Altogether on this reservation, there are nearly a hundred children just like these. You don't say. And do you realize that they don't have a school? They don't. Not of any kind? And what chance have they of, of growing up in a civilized world without being able to, to read, write, or even speak English? Oh, you can't tell. Things may get better someday. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm here. My father was a teacher. We came here to put his life savings into a school for these children. But, uh, he lost the money. At the Silver Showboat. He hardly drank at all. And he never gambled. They must have put something in a drink. I wouldn't be surprised. He died not long after that. So ever since then, I've been, been working to carry out his dream. Melinda, I haven't got anything against kids, or education, or dreams for that matter. But you're out of your mind to try to, to try to get that money back at the silver showboat. Then you still won't help me. Look, even last night they were talking about busting my bones, and that can be a very unpleasant experience. Melinda, if you go back there and lose, you'll be broke. And if you win, they'll try to find some way to steal the money back and shoot us in the bargain. Then where would you be? But I have no other way. Why don't you try something safe? Like robbing banks. <laughs> oh, all right. There's nothing to cry about, nothing to be unhappy about. Just a cup of coffee. The world won't come to an end. Why bother with her, Destry? She's only an Indian. Tell me something. If you had a school, would you go to it? Well, a kid should have a school. Tell me something. Did you arrange for her to fall down and cry? <laughs> Let's try the hazard table tonight. What's that? Dice. Oh, good. My dice system is unbeatable. It is, huh? A geometric progression of always doubling your bets while adding the amount of the original wager. Euclid again? No, the father of geometry, Descartes. They can't beat him unless they cheat. They can beat him. Hi, Romeo. Come on, baby. Take over the dice table and keep a close eye on that destry. I'll take over. Little Joe from Kokomo. Come on, baby. It means he wants to make four the hard way with two twos. Seven minutes. Come in now, boss. It's your shot, little lady. Take two of the dice. Lady, lucky, lucky lady. Baby needs a new pair of shoes. $20 or a 7 or 11? 
put it on the pass line. Oh. Baby needs a new school. Unnatural seven. <laughs> seven, you win. Double your bet. According to Descartes, I leave the wager on the tape. Her boyfriend, Descartes, is letting it ride with spurs, and I'm with him. Send them galloping, <laughs> lady. And 11 straight for seven. The little lady's out to break the place tonight. <laughs> <laughs> See, all it takes is an acquaintance with mathematics. Could be, but it helps to be friendly with Lady Luck at the same time. <laughs> Yahoo! A sweet seven the bitter way. <laughs> well, Linda, try not to be too lucky while those boys are watching, will you? You're taking too much time in the payoff here. Those dice are getting cold. Please give them you to the lady. You're better again. You want to let it ride? Yes. Oh. Aider from Decatur. You have to make another eight. 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 Little baby gives you a heebie jeebie. That's a five. Rattle shake and let him fly. Go, lady. Yeah! Aider from Decatur? That's it. You made your point. Oh. <laughs> Came up little fever. <laughs> well, I've never seen anything like that crazy fever in his luck. Neither have I. Suppose you go change it. Yeah. Tomorrow I am going to the bank and buy it. <laughs> Coming out now, lady shooter. Give me the best. I'm doing so well. That's about to come to it. Home. Give them to me. Roll them for the lady. You got a hunch. Melinda, why don't you shoot the whole pile? Some cuckold, he's walking right into it. The whole pile? Nobody loses tonight. I'll bet a dollar. One dollar. I make this point. As sure as the noble savage never learns to read or write. I have the strangest feeling that you won't make it. Everything, but he doesn't make it. That he wants to put her money on oh, don't pass. Don't pass. Me too. Well, Cramp's the loser. The lady wins big. Why the strangest feeling you would make it? I think we'd better go now. Come on, you lucky, lucky lady. So you won again. Congratulations. Well, I didn't win. I rolled boxcars and lost. I did the best I could for you. And we're going to do the very best we can with you. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. I just want to say that the fine fellows who own this establishment just congratulated a big winner. Big winner of, uh... $4,122. A big winner of $4,122. How about that? You got enough now? No, I told you I need $14,000. My father had a 10-year plan at $1,400 a year. Well, you all know that some crooked tin horn gamblers would have a couple of fellas waiting outside to try to get back. They're $4,122, right? So we want to be just as nice to the Silver Show boat as they have been to us. And we're going to come back here tomorrow night and give them a chance to get even. How about that? Good. Customers like this nice young lady and cowboy who give us our greatest pleasure. 
Now I'll go back to the tables and lose some more money because we need it. <laughs> Mr. Boyd and I are inviting you and the young lady to a small, private, and friendly game of poker tomorrow night. Will you be there? Well, um, they'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. You really amazed me. How did you know that we were going to lose tonight? <laughs> Dice didn't feel right. How would you like to celebrate? Good. All right, tell you what. About one hour, I and the most magnificent supper you have ever seen will be in that hotel dining room waiting for you. All right? <laughs> Wonderful. so soon. Oh, just ordered a very fancy supper over at the hotel. They told me you had the only champagne in town. There it is. No, no. No charge. Well, thank you very much. Well, it's the least that I can do. Because if we don't win tomorrow night, it'll be the last champagne you ever drink. <laughs> well, then I, I sure will try to enjoy it. Hold it right there. Well, you boys saw the poster. Now, it's all a mistake. Ask the sheriff. Now, boys, be reasonable. I can't stay here all night. Mister, you got no choice. Well, at least then go out and look for the sheriff, will you? Well, he's going to show up sooner or later, so why don't you just sit down and shut up? He'll be here any minute. He's just been held up. Look at that. Almost six o'clock in the morning. Well, now, doggone it, Mr. Destry. We already apologized. Oh, thanks a lot. No sleep. Melinda's going to be furious with me, and I've got to go out to Cherokee Reservation, pick up a horse. It could have been a lot worse, Mr. Destry. After all, that there poster did say dead or alive. Why, we could have shot you first. Things might have been a lot simpler if you had. Well, I imagine you'd like to hear what happened to me last night. I am not interested in the slightest, and I don't recall inviting you to join me. Oh, I don't blame you for being mad. You see, what happened was, these two fellows... I know all about those two fellows. Good, good. Then you understand why I couldn't make it to supper. I suppose that by some people's standards, two girls are better than one. You say so. Didn't those two fellows seem rather cheap? Hmm. Threatening is more like it. Yeah, threatening. The sheriff didn't show up till 6 o'clock. Of course, when he did, they, uh, they let me go. My, you are popular with the ladies, aren't you? Are we talking about the same thing? Those two fellows that you were with last night that held you against your will. Mm -hmm. The red-headed one with all the fake jewelry and the brunette. I saw you go inside with them. Are you talking about the two... Melinda, I only went in the door of the saloon with those two girls. The only reason I went there in the first place was to get the champagne for our supper. On the way back, these two cowboys grabbed me, hauled me off to the sheriff's, kept me there all night, you know, for the reward money. Is that the truth? You don't believe me? Ask the sheriff. Oh, for goodness sake. 
And now think of all the perfectly good fury I wasted on you. Oh, Mr. Destry, won't you please join me for breakfast? Oh, no. No, not if I'm going to get that mare. Got to go all the way out to the reservation. Oh, just one thing. Don't you let Hoyt and Benson talk you into that poker game until I get back. You may know all there is to know about the laws of probability. But you don't know anything about bluffing. And bluffing is 90% of poker. I'll meet you in the lobby. It's at 8 o'clock. Well, good morning, gentlemen. It's gonna be a nice day. I'm beginning to get a little tired of him. You want me to take care of him, boss? Yeah, I guess I do. He's invited to a very special private poker game tonight. You and Frame see to it that he's too busy to get there. been doing quite well. Up until now. Well, where's Mr. Destry? I understand the two of you have been giving the Silver Showboat quite a run for its money. Oh, I imagine that Mr. Destry has found better things to do. Mr. Whitney, do you know anything about playing poker? Poker? Well, in all modesty, I fancy myself as uh, the essentials of advanced poker. It's the fourth book I've read on the subject today. Mr. Destry and I were to play with Mr. Benson tonight. And he's not here. Mr. Whitney, can you tell when someone is cheating you at cards? Well, I have rather a keen eye. Then I wonder if you would care to escort me to the game. Well, of course I'll escort you, Miss Carter. And I guarantee you, with Alexander Whitney present, there will be no cheating. They wouldn't dare. Thank you, Mr. Whitney. Coming. Got old Alex with me, was it? Oh, good. He doesn't even know how many cards are on the deck. No Destry? Nope. Looks like the boys did their job. Let's see if this thing is working. Give me a full house. Ace is over ten. Right, boss. Upstairs. Good evening, Miss Carter. Mr. Whitney. Good evening. Where's your friend Destry tonight? I didn't come here to talk about him. That's the spirit, Miss Carter. You came here to gamble. And with your kind of luck, who knows? You might find up owning the place tonight. Shall we get on with it? Well, of course, by all means. Here, be seated. Make yourself comfortable, Mr. Thank Whitney. you, I will. Better go take a look at it. Mm, yep. Yeah. Well, he still says 
sitting there, just like he was. He ain't going nowhere. Well, now that just might be open to argument. Drop those guns. We'll draw straws to see which one of you ties up the other. I'll take the loser. Go on. Well, now, don't you fellas worry. When I get back in town, I'll ask somebody to come out here and untie you. One of these days. Two pair, eights and sixes. Beats me. Three trays. But you win the deal, Miss Carter. Uh, maybe you should quit. Can't. Now that's the true sporting spirit. Her luck could change at any minute. I'm in. Here's mine. Mine. Well, I hope the cards are better this time. Evening. I thought you were never coming back. Where have you been? Behind a rock. All night? Believe me, I didn't enjoy it. How's it going? I've lost over $2,000. My system doesn't seem to be working. She's been holding her own pretty well. She's a pretty smart girl, Destry. Smarter than a lot of folks I know. I wouldn't dispute that fact. Linda, maybe your luck would change if I played a couple of hands for you. Do you think so? Well, sometimes it'll change. That is, if these gentlemen don't mind. Oh, cards is cards. Yep, cards is cards. It's a nice room. Seems a pity not to uh, make yourself comfortable, take off your hat and coat. You know, I haven't seen a hat rack like that one since a uh, game I played in uh, El Paso. Tell you, I had the worst one of luck that night. But I have a feeling I'm going to be considerably luckier this evening. Let's play cards, shall we? Let's play cards. I'll call your 200 and uh, raise you three. I'll see that and uh, bump you five. You didn't raise last time around. Change my mind. I'll call your bluff. I'll bluff all night with four deuces. That brings us up to over five thousand dollars. Cut. you a hundred. Raise you a hundred. Pat. You're going to have to pay plenty to even make a draw in this game, Destry. I'll see your hundred. And I'll bounce you a thousand. I'll see your thousand. And raise you another thousand. And right back at you. Take one. Like to cut that deck, please? I believe it's my privilege to ask for a cut any time I want in this game. Well, Mr. Hoyt, you gonna let me cut that deck? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. I'll 
understand, Pat. I'll, uh, I'll bet a thousand. Well, I'll uh, see your thousand and raise your thousand. Just keep things honest. Let's just see what kind of grit you got, cowboy. I'm upping you the same. Well, that leaves me just small change if I lose. I'll see you. What have you got, cowboy? Full house. Ace is high. Won't do. Straight flush. Hand I'm calling is the one in your sleeve. What? When I asked to cut those cards, I ruined your stack deck, mister. Hoyt here slipped you a brand new, fresh hand. It must be in your sleeve. Let's see it. Why, that's cheating. That's right, sir. And you agree I won? Certainly. And I'm going to see that the sheriff hears about this. You won't have to go far. You should be right outside. We had a little talk earlier about the way things are done at the Silver Showboat. You caught him red-handed cheating. Yeah, Destry asked me to hang around. Benson, by the time you get out of jail, you'll never want to play in Little River again. But they've got to. We have to win $5,000 more. Oh, come on now. You'll have to do with less money. Cut down on pencils or erasers or something. I'm so happy. While you've been getting your strength back, I've raised nearly the whole $14,000. Gambling? <laughs> no, of course not. Mr. Whitney put up $1,000 all by himself, and then everyone in the town started contributing. And on top of all that, they all came out here and in three days. Look. Well, it's time they started doing something for these kids. My students are inside. Would you like to come in and see them? <sighs> I think I'd better be moving along. Charlie Bent again? <laughs> yeah, Charlie Bent. Well, at least let us show you the present we have for you. Well, I'm not much on presents, Melinda. Well, you can't take it with you. It, it stays here. So that we'll think of you all the time. Mary. Mary, go ring Mr. Destry. Ring Mr. Destry now. <laughs> Mr. Destry. Do you like it? Well, I've been beat on a few times. I guess I yelled pretty good. But I reckon that's about the sweetest sound I ever made. Goodbye, Melinda. Goodbye, Destry. And come back. Will it be 
called a man on the run, or a place in the sun, for a drifter who passed his way.